Hey there, it's Brandon Hart, the Eco Struder, and this is just a quick and dirty one because I wanted to uh, call out the fact that Modix has just posted a bunch of new information about the Generation 4 machines. So uh, just real informal, just going to run through what some of these things are, what they mean, how they compare to V3 and stuff like that. So starting right at the top, first of all, the thing looks different. It's got a new enclosure. It's actually, they changed their logo even on these things. So they actually, they, they look quite a bit different than the current generation or version three. I should also address that. Uh, it's always been version one, version two, version three. Now it's generation four. And basically it makes more sense if you think about the fact that in the beginning there was only a big 60. So this is a 180X, but it's the first version of the 180X. So this is generation one. Uh, rather than version three. So that's the reason for the naming. Anyway, uh, so generation four will have a pneumatic lid on the top. So normally this fall, folds all the way over. Uh, we put little kickstands on here, but on generation four, they're actually gonna have pneumatic pistons that will hold the thing up and then hold it closed again when you lower it back down. Uh, much better hinges. There's gonna be actual ceiling around all of the doors. Um, they're gonna have sturdier doors as well. Uh, these are functional, these are sufficient, but they are a little floppy, a little flimsy. That's gonna be fixed in generation four also. And pretty cool too, they're gonna to have a hatch on the back that will open and allow you to access everything from the rear of the machine itself. So you can work on it from the front, work on it from the back, and have access in both cases. Also very, very exciting, IDEX. Not sure what that means. IDEX is independent dual extrusion. So essentially gonna have two different print heads, one on the front, one on the back. And it will bring the print head in that it's actually going to be printing with anytime you wanna print with that particular color, that particular material. Most often this will be used with a primary material and then a support material. So however you want to use it, IDEX will be available as an add-on. In other words, the machine will not come with its IDEX configuration straight out of the boxes. Uh, it will actually come as an add-on. So you will need to upgrade if you want the IDEX functionality, but it will be ready for IDEX from the very beginning, um, which is pretty, pretty cool. So obviously, you know, again, um, you, so there's not gonna be a secondary print head, uh, like a fixed secondary print head on these machines because if you want to print with two different materials, one of them is going to be on the main print head, one of them will be on the second print head in an IDEX configuration. Okay, uh, yes. So we're also looking at, um, in the current machines on the 180X, on the big meters, there is a Duex 5 expansion. They also call that the automatic calibration expansion. Um, basically, it probes the bed and then gives you independent control of all four Z-axis motors, but that's only on the 180X and on the big meter. Not anymore. On generation four, all of them get it by default. Not even an upgrade. It comes ready to control each of the individual Z-axis motors straight out of the box, boxes as a kit, the machine you'll get. Yes, so you will already have that built into it from the very beginning. Additionally, beefier motors. So this is uh, all the version three machines and pretty much every version before it has always used the standard NEMA 17 stepper motors. On the generation four machines, the Z axis as well as the X axis are going to have NEMA 23 motors. So this is not closed loop, it's still open loop, but these are much bigger, much beefier, much more powerful NEMA 23 motors than, what's the, than the NEMA 17s that are on the version three. Now, the Y axis is still gonna be NEMA 17. Why is that, Mr. Eco Struder guy? Well, I'll tell you, that is because it's IDEX. And so because each, each one of those motors is only gonna move one print head, which has only got one tool plate on it, it only needs to have 
a smaller NEMA 17 motor and you don't have to worry about layer shifting. Um, it also reduces the overall weight of the gantry, so you can move it back and forth along X much, much faster with the lower weight of that system without having to worry about layer shifting and things like that. So uh, really, really nice for that. Um, they're talking about travel speeds of 350 millimeters a second. Again, helps to have some slightly lighter motors on that Y axis to, to do that. And high quality, so no print quality compromises, printing at 100 millimeters a second, which is pretty fast, certainly faster than what the V3 machines are capable of. So, uh, so yeah, that's pretty awesome. Continuing on, they have redesigned the screen and the uh, brackets and, and everything for the screen itself. There will be two different options for this. One is sort of the standard option on uh, most of the machines, which will be sort of a rigid mount, much like this one, but with a sleeker design and a big emergency stop button or reset button that is located up here. So right now you have to touch the screen or if you happen to have a paperclip handy, you can poke one of these holes and reset it that way. On the Gen 4 machines, big red button, punch the button, emergency stop, reset is initiated. Uh, so that's pretty nice. The Z-axis has CNC uh, machined brackets. So anybody who's experienced a little bit of dra uh, drooping and, and um, kind of some, some issues associated with the Z-axis not staying in place or not being consistent between the NEMA 23s and the CNC machined brackets, for the Z-axis, I think you will uh, no longer have any of those issues there. Um, optical end stops. If you're gonna go to IDEX and both of the tool heads need to be able to switch back and forth and know exactly where their position is, you gotta have optical end stops. They're much better than the little clicky end stops that the V3 machines have. So we're gonna get optical end stops on all of the axes, uh, well, on X and Y at least and those will be far more precise, far more uh, accurate than the current clicky end stops. Seems like a small thing, but it can make a big difference. They are also improving the PTFE management. So there's a, a couple different aspects that go into this. One is this little roller carriage here that is currently equipped on some of the larger machines. Um, but another thing is they're actually going to have a pneumatic coupling, essentially a pneumatic a uh, uh, bracket thing that will sit at the top here and will hold the end of the PTFE tubing. Um, one other thing, they used to include an extra long piece of PTFE so you could cut it to length to match your machine. A lot of people weren't cutting them to length. They were using the whole extra long piece of PTFE. They're now going to make sure that they're always cut to the appropriate size. No, no thinking about where to cut it and um, if you're anything like me, sort of the fear of commitment of making that cut because you can't put the two pieces back together again if you cut it too short, it's going to be cut by default to the correct length right off the bat. With that, there are also going to be some upgrade options. So I mentioned that the screen has a couple different options. One is this rigid mount. Well, one of the upgrade options is a tilting screen that's on an articulating arm. That also adds a much larger emergency stop button in addition to the one that's already on the screen. So you have two of them now. Uh, and I think maybe even cooler than that, there is a secondary uh, power switch that'll be positioned right on the front of the machine here. So there will still be the power switch on the back, but there will be a second one up front. And so as long as the one in the back is turned on, you can then control power right from the front of the machine if you have the uh, tilt option, the tilt screen and emergency button option on your setup. So that is also fantastic. So all in all, lots of really, really cool stuff. There's some other things that aren't necessarily like headline features, uh, small little design changes and tweaks, things like uh, there are, the, the, you're gonna have the option to adjust the belt tension on the X axis from the outside of the machine. So you'll be able to essentially uh, put a hex key in through the outside of the machine, tighten up those belts the way that you need them to. Significantly better than having to kind of take all of this apart 
and, and try to reach the uh, brackets that currently hold the NEMA 17 motors on the x-axis here. So that's a nice touch. Um, they're going to be doing a, a few other things in the coming months that will be announced as well that are currently sort of being set up and ready to, uh, to be implemented and offered to customers in the uh, initial announcement and the initial batch that will be shipping. So more information coming soon on stuff like that. Some of that, I will tell you, is pretty cool stuff. So I'm very, very excited about it. But that's your quick overview of all of the updates that have been announced for the Modix Generation 4 machines. Um, this video is going to be dated very quickly, so I will tell you right now, it is currently October 31st, 2022. So as more announcements, more information comes out, and then uh, we'll be sure to keep everything updated and, and make sure people know about it. In the meantime, leave your comments below, shoot questions to ecostruder at heartsmartproducts.com, uh, click the bell to subscribe and be notified, and I don't know what other uh, youtube -y things you're supposed to do all right, thanks everybody for watching and uh, see you next time.